you if you don't do anything from zero to one. <laughs> That's my lunch break. But here we are. Um, yeah, uh, without, uh, without much further ado, ado let's uh, see what's on the table. So how many of you have uh, attended the pre-conference on design thinking and UX? Quite a few, okay. okay. How many of you have uh, used design thinking? Or heard of design thinking? Before? Right, that's good. So, if I were to start describing design thinking, I can go on for more than an hour, but I'm not going to focus on that. Our subject today would be a subset, a use case in design thinking. So I'm going to only focus on uh, using design thinking methodology for task analysis. How many of you do task analysis in your daily jobs as writers in some form? Okay, that's good. Okay. So <clears throat> for those of you who haven't heard of design thinking, design thinking is a methodology to um, solve complex issues and find desirable solutions. So the emphasis here is on desirable solutions. So what we are focusing on is not just a solution, but a desirable solution. As Scott mentioned in uh, the keynote speech, uh, every user has a journey, right? No one wakes up in the morning and says, oh, today is a wonderful day, let me go and configure an LDAP server. That never happens. But one of the reasons why they're doing that is because their business requires them to do it. So we're going to focus on uh, task analysis using design thinking. So what are we going to look at in the presentation? So uh, we're going to look at some of the benefits of design thinking, how you as writers uh, who do task analysis can use some of the design thinking methodology and apply them to craft better documents. Uh, to become better writers, and not only that, how do you go back and impact the product? How do you make it more usable, and in turn, make the documentation more minimal, right? I think a lot of us are uh, documenting some of the cloud products, hosted applications, and one thing that we are asked usually is, will the pod, the plain old documentation suffice, right? And that's, that's something that we need to answer. I mean, how about, how about making, uh, making it more intelligent, how about giving visits to users so that they go and uh, do the things themselves and don't have to rely on documentation. Right? So we look at some of the benefits of design thinking and as a consequence, we are also going to look at how human-centered design approach to document tasks helps not only our users complete their tasks, but also helps us as writers to improve our writing. I'm also going to look at some of the tools and processes that I personally use uh, uh, before and after learning about design thinking. The last point is um, I'm going to also talk about how we have been doing some innovation brainstorming in my organization uh, in the documentation team. So those are some of the takeaways and that's some of the things I'm going to discuss. So design is eating the world. How many of you have heard the quote, software is eating the world? That's by Mark Anderson, and he's an investor in Silicon Valley. I would take this a little further and say it's not just software that's eating the world, it's not just car companies who are going and recruiting software engineers, it's, it is design that's eating the world. One of the cornerstones of creating anything these days is accessibility. A technology has to be accessible to a wide range of audience. The reason I say that is people are expected to do different things these days that they're not used to doing. One a very a recent example has to be the use of mobile phone wallets, right? I have, uh, you know, I was tasked to teach how to use some of these things to my own family members these days, and it's not a simple thing, right? So how do you address that? Uh, how do you provide information? And how do you go back and do task analysis, keeping not only the lowest common denominator, but also someone who's been using this for quite some time? How do you address both? That's a difficult balance to keep. 
Okay? So design is important, not only in products, which you would have to, because our rows are expanding rapidly, we're not just expected to sit there and silo and write our documents, but also go into our scrum teams and affect that change. Uh, design is important also in the way we present content. Right? So I want to look at complex tasks and design thinking in the following slides. So that so what is design thinking? Design thinking, like I said, is not only a methodology, but it can also be used as a tool to uh, analyze some complex tasks that your user might have to perform for their business. Uh, uh, why do you need design thinking? Because it helps you do more with less. So we've all heard of minimalism. Uh, I mean, this is not the first time that you're hearing that word. I mean, we've been talking about it for quite some time now. So how do you affect minimalism when some of us might be fortunate? I mean, we might be part of the Agile teams and we might be able to go back and say things don't look correct in the product. We might want to change it. I'm not going to document this. But not all of us have that luxury, right? Uh, sometimes you might have to document what's given to you, right? I'm also going to focus on some of those things. And how uh, human-centered radical collaboration, we're going to have a cultural shift in the way we work. Our roles as technical writers, I'm going to discuss something about that. And how do you collaborate with the product teams to go back and change the way things work in the product itself? Uh, task analysis. So how did I start doing this? I have. I'm, I haven't been a writer for uh, too long. Uh, five and a half, six years, right? So a couple of years ago, I used to work at a hardware company. It used uh, we used to manufacture thin clients. And we used to have this uh, pseudo waterfall agile methodology. I mean, uh, there is no clear way of saying what that is, but that's how it was, right? So uh, the we we were done like this with a bunch of questions. Uh, I am a big fan of spreadsheets, unfortunately. So I started using this very simple questions. Could you zoom in a bit? I think it's a bit of a basic questions that you would ask right, when you're doing task analysis. So I started doing this. And as I evolved, as I uh, you know, started learning more about uh, design thinking, which was, uh, which was through a presentation that the CEO of my company did, I started uh, approaching this whole question in a totally different way. How I did that, uh, I would focus on the next few slides. I'll be sharing this presentation with you all, so you could probably look at the yeah, share the pen drive with you all. So design thinking, so what does that entail? So you have five phases in design thinking. It's empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. So what I'm going to say is not that you throw out whatever you're doing currently in terms of task analysis and start using this fancy new thing. But all I'm saying is you might want to give it a shot by incorporating this in your way of doing task analysis. So let's look at each one of this. Uh, of course, I mean, this can be applied in a sequence, but need not necessarily have to be in a sequence. Some of these things are obvious, but we, you know, as we all know, obvious never gets done, right? So that's the last thing that gets done. Right, let's look at each one of this. So the first is empathize. So when you start doing task analysis, you empathize. Okay. So what if I tell you, as some of you may be writers, editors, that the uh, contraption on the left is a washing machine, and the contraption on the right is a washing machine that you would have to document, right? The only difference is the contraption on the right uh, is the most awesomest product that uh, your companies come out with. It uses artificial intelligence and deep learning to boot. So uh, it doesn't use water, for example. There's only one catch to it, though. It has 46 discrete steps, 
that the user has to do before you do your laundry. Doing your laundry is bad enough, you wouldn't want to uh, stand in front of your washing machine doing 46 steps. But here's this thing, right? Everyone's bought into this idea. They love this idea, they want to sell this, and there's a market for it. But you would have to document this for uh, you know, 46 steps. How do you go about doing this? I would say empathize with the user. You would ask me, how do I do this? Okay, even if I empathize with the user, uh, the best that I can think of is go back and say 46 steps won't work. But if you don't have that luxury, motivate that person, know that, uh, have very clear progress in each one of those steps. And if you think some of the steps don't have a clear progress, you could as well omit the step. So that's empathize. Uh, empathize with your customers so that you understand their journey, you understand their narrative, you understand why they would do it. What you can do is have one of your PR from the documentation team use the document and see how you can improve that. Uh, so quickly prototype, write these, test, uh, uh, these task steps, I'm sorry, and then you could uh, get it reviewed multiple times and then uh, go to the final tasks, set of tasks. And the next one, the, the next phase is test. Test is important. I think uh, this has been emphasized enough, but what I do personally is uh, involve our scrum teams. Uh, thankfully, I follow the agile model now. So I tend to look at uh, test cases as treasure trove of information. I mean, that is something that is often neglected. That is one input that I think has given me a lot of lot of information in the past. So test not only your document, but also become and it looks like this. So uh, the two volunteers, I'm going to take this apart. Uh, I'm going to leave it with only the chassis. And uh, one has to assume the role of the writer, and the other would be assuming the role of the user. And the writer would have to sort of use some of these methodologies that we have been discussing with to uh, say some of the tasks. And the user should follow in the tasks that are set by the uh, writer. Okay, so what's your names? So Snehal would be the user, and uh, Mohsen will be the writer. Just follow whatever instructions that he gives you, and the end product has to be nothing like this. It asks you to assemble this. Yeah, it has to look like this, okay? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Neil, uh, okay, first to empathize, right? To understand <laughs> how much do you know about vehicles? <laughs> okay, so you have seen uh, police uh, jeep, yeah? So uh, first, we will assemble. We'll go with the you know foundation, the baseline. So you know, assemble the four tires. So you can start with the rear, left or right, and yeah, rear, front, whatever you are comfortable with. Yeah, so we have a base right now. So the next thing, what we're gonna do is, uh, this is a steering wheel, right? Yeah, assemble the steering. Yeah, you can uh, use the picture. Possibility that this is what all of the users are doing. I mean, whenever we hear things like, no one's really documentation. I think we have to actually pull out some of the statistics uh, to sort of motivate ourselves on how many people are visiting the documentation site and how many are the exit pages is a wonderful stat. So, how many are actually going to the customer support? We actually use that, we go to that uh, link every month to, just to motivate ourselves. <laughs> It's a push fit, I believe, no, that's a push fit. So yeah, that's perfect. So next, uh, we're gonna have uh, our driver uh, seated 
and his grace. And uh, with the help of a picture, you know, the diagram, we can. Yeah, and it's, uh, on this trading page. It's the other way around. sort of sit in butcher the document, which is really, really good for me uh, quite often. But the one thing that I would really love to have is have a direct connect with the customers. And it's not really possible to, I mean, how many of uh, you would accept if, uh, say, someone says, I'm going to come and stand behind you or like, somewhere there, and you use your editor, whatever, I mean, your XML editor. And I'm going to see how you use your element. So the next time, I'm going to somehow predict what are the next uh, you know, elements that I'm going to use, and that's going to appear uh, on its own, for example. But you might not really be ready to do something like that, right? I mean, that's that cases uh, where when we when we have gone and asked them from the highest levels, but we haven't. understand um, your question of these things to right. yes uh, the first thing is like Mossy mentioned uh, the empathy right he, uh, he he probably said yeah I mean I need to empathize with you to see how much you know about cars and what sort of car this is if you want to wondering how can we perform like do testing at the time of like task analysis because when you uh, follow agile methodology <coughs> Uh, you work closely with your feature team, and that are time, that that's the time they'll be developing the code, right? And task analysis is the first thing that the writer does before start before they start writing. So how can we uh, test when they they themselves are like developing the code? I can't uh, perform the testing at the task analysis stage, right? I need to wait for them to complete it. By the time my write up will also be ready, so I can test what I've written. But I don't think I can, uh, you know, test something at the task analysis stage. Okay, great. Thank you. So there are two answers to that. 
So one is a consultant's answer. It depends. Uh, but um, I, see, if I, it mostly comes down to uh, when I say testing, I was mostly uh, looking at current print where you know it's a piece of you know something that you can deliver, right? So you perform task analysis for that sprint for that piece that is being delivered, or for the complete feature where you know it's all combined together and it's a solution that is provided, right? Yes. So yeah, I mean, currently we are doing it. Uh, you know. Thank you so much, Gokul, for uh, telling us the obvious and the not so obvious in uh, UX designing task analysis. And uh, to give away a little token of award, I would like to invite Manoj Gokul from Oracle. 